All right, here's the strong winds. We are just in the core now. We lost the window. It just doesn't stop. Numerous winds of 90 miles an hour or greater. Several reports of damage. It is going into the Cedar Rapids metro area, into downtown. Williamsburg around 1215, Newhall around 1220, Vinton around 1230, Cedar Rapids around 1230 to 1245. It was just watching all, all of it unfold to our west and knowing that was coming this way, but not really knowing what it was going to do. We didn't know anything about a derecho coming this way. Saw something come across about a severe thunderstorm warning. So I was kind of keeping my eye on the outside. I started uh, texting some of my, my friends who are uh, also spotters. Maybe we had discussed, like maybe somebody mentioned it in the locker room. Uh, maybe I made sure I grabbed my raincoat. I want to give you a look outside right now because you can already see the big shelf cloud here in the distance. It is a wall of water. It's essentially a hurricane over Iowa. Again, we had that reported gust of 99 miles an hour in the Marshalltown area. The storm going through Marshalltown was kind of our last signal before it got into our area. Getting the wind measurements out of there and the severe reports really set us up for our expectations of what was going to happen in eastern Iowa. Saw a AAA uh, email come across saying Marshalltown had 98 mile an hour winds. and. I, my, I had to close my mouth <laughs> because it didn't look that bad outside. But then our power flickered five times that I know of, and I grabbed my stuff and went downstairs. About noon, I decided to, to head to my spot, which is located on Quiver Court, just off Boyson Road and just west of Albernet Road in uh, Marion. It's, it's got a perfect 360 degree uh, clear view of the sky. The first inkling we had was um, I got an email that we, we, since our daughter was headed off to school, we were all going up to get uh, COVID tests. And we got an email from uh, from Chest Iowa saying, hey, if there, there's, there's potentially bad weather this afternoon, and if that's the case, uh, they'll have to reschedule testing. Uh, we had a truck out here. Uh, we we're replacing some parts on it and washing it, uh, maintenancing it, and we decided to uh, grabbed some lunch. We went into the office area. Um, Zach and I stayed because we brought our lunch with us and uh, my uh, cousin Mike, he went to town to grab some. We saw a little bit of a storm warning coming. My parents had texted me and said uh, there was a bad storm on the way and we thought we didn't really hear much about it so we Kind of ignored it. Monitoring the storm uh, on radar through much of the day and it was holding its own, not only was it holding its own, but it was intensifying. Um, it was my intention then not to go out to meet it or, you know, to chase it. So I opted to stay within uh, less than a mile from my home. We didn't expect anything coming and we weren't paying attention to radios and uh, weather forecasts at that point. Yeah, we'll go back in third and we'll go uh, east now instead of west. Now we're just gonna play a game of trying to stay ahead of this thing. Yeah. <laughs> it really is a game of cat and mouse. We were in the process myself and um, uh, our HR director, Tammy Wise, she was helping me call the county offices. I was calling all the cities, letting them know if you have people outside, please get them inside. Um, have them take cover, get their outside um, things buttoned up, um, things put away, people back indoors. And just as we were getting the last community called and the last county office called, the wind just came in. Um, I was looking out the door off to the south and everything looked green. So I, I knew something was gonna happen, probably a lot bigger of event than what we were even anticipating. 
Uh, we were watching Channel 2 on, on the TV in the uh, office in the shop, and uh, we eventually ended up losing satellite coverage. And so we kind of relied on our phone uh, for some apps and radar and things like that. And we just didn't really think, I mean, we study the weather being farmers. We, we watch it every single day and it just did not seem like it was going to be that severe until it came pretty much out of nowhere. And I headed to the Toledo Fire Station, which was just right across the street. All the responders were out. I asked them what they needed and it was kind of one of those things where we don't know what we need yet. So uh, I just let them know, you know, contact me on the radio, contact me on the cell phone. I immediately called the state because we call state duty officer to let them know we've had um, a, a significant um, event. We don't exactly know what resources we need yet, but we've had a significant event. We will be calling for resources at some point in time. So we are racing the storm right now on Highway 30. I thought the storm would be a little bit more photogenic. And right now, I just wanted to give you an update on things. We may hang here for a little bit just to give warning to the control booth back there, but we have a very intense thunderstorm that is ongoing right now. There have been reports of substantial damage around Tama, around Tama County, and the National Weather Service is saying winds are possibly near 100 miles an hour or higher. Uh, we had been doing cut, several cut-ins prior to the noon newscast. I went in and I was like, you get those wind gusts that are coming into the metro if they're up at 70 miles per hour. Yeah, you should probably hang with it. Uh, and it was so far away, it was still seemingly so far away that it felt like maybe this was too much to keep with it. Progressively, we were realizing when we were getting those wind reports of 90 mile per hour, even 100 mile per hour at some point, that this was a serious storm. And I think even just looking at the warnings while you felt in control, it, because people were getting notified as to some level of that there was a severe thunderstorm warning, it covered basically the whole state at one point. And so how do you even try to explain what this is and what the destruction can do. It was rapidly evolving really hour by hour. Every hour, the intensity of the storm increased. The outlook for severe weather increased. We were playing catch up with that storm pretty much all morning long. And then we reached noon and the warning started entering our counties. And that's when it was like, all right, what's done is done. You know, now it's time to kind of do our job and trying to warn the public. 91 miles an hour showing up in some spots. 66. I mean, we have just incredibly, incredibly intense thunderstorms. All right. Hello, YouTube. It's August 10th, 2020. The year that just never ceases to amaze is continuing to amaze. We've got MCV coming in with 100 mile an hour confirmed winds west of me here in Toledo, which is Tama County. Uh, right now we're right on the leading edge of this storm. We are just north of Bell Plain by Van Horn racing back east on 30. I don't know how well you can see it, but the corn in the foreground is almost being knocked completely to the ground. Very intense winds now racing down Highway 30. There's a lot of leaves flying through the air, a lot of damage. Look at all the leaves and debris flying through the air right now. The core of those winds, upwards of 100 miles per hour, probably about a mile or two behind us. But it was a gorgeous day and I had in, in just a normal Iowa day. Nice, a nice actually Iowa day. Yeah, we got there, uh, we got there about mid, I think about midday and, um, you know, um, we were hiking up, uh, you know, there's, there's some gorgeous bluffs there along the Cedar River. It was a weekday morning, so it wasn't so busy that day and we probably had 15, 20 campers in the campground and maybe 15 vehicles in the park at the time, but we had been turning cars away from the park all morning because we were cutting trees that were falling down over the main road. So that was really a saving grace to some extent, possibly for some people out here. It looks like there's a pretty good indication of very intense winds just northwest of Bell Plain, west of Bell Plain, uh, Keystone area right now. And this is coming right towards Cedar Rapids. So Cedar Rapids, we've been telling you, you need to take these storms very, very seriously. Uh, these storms will pack quite the punch. Again, we're talking wind gust upwards of 100 miles per hour, and we're already seeing indications of that on the very leading edge, Rebecca.
Yeah, and Nick, we've gotten reports now in Marshall County of a 106 mile an hour wind gust. Now we have uh, this warning now, Sarah, for Lynn County for Cedar Rapids is for 90 mile an hour winds. This is for 90 mile an hour winds. So folks, we're staying here. We have a very, very intense thunderstorm. This is I'm treating this as if this is a tornado warning. Then we get a report of 106 mile per hour winds confirmed. And then it's like, well, we need to stay with this. And the fact that it was moving at 70 miles per hour, that it then ended up in Cedar Rapids about 20 minutes later. But the fact that we were getting these the confirmed reports of 100 mile power wind gusts that, I mean, unbelievable, really. So that's what's coming our way. We've got a nice Boeing segment and we're going to be kind of uh, on the northern peak of it. And that's where the strongest winds tend to be. We walked outside to see it as it was coming over the, the hill back there and all of a sudden the temperature dropped about 25 degrees it seemed. I mean enough to give you goosebumps and we thought there's something wrong here and the sky started to make like a low pitched noise kind of a you know like they say like a freight train and we thought well we'll just go back inside and finish our lunch. We didn't know what was coming. Again, there's likely incredible wind uh, behind us as well. We're starting to get closer to those more intense wind gusts. Cedar Rapids to Iowa City. This is an incredibly intense thunderstorm that is ongoing right now. And when everything started crashing down, we ducked underneath the trailer here and we were laying right in between the tires there with a couple dogs and we kind of hunkered down and hoped for the best. Somehow we fit two of us and two dogs together underneath in between those tires to protect ourselves. Um, and this, the trailer ended up keeping the rafters from falling on us and the tin and everything. So it, I guess it was about the only place we had left to go. building completely rained down on top of that truck all the way around us. I mean, we were laying in a couple inches of water. It was really uncomfortable, but um, you know, it saved us. That truck saved our lives. It felt like the world had ended out here. I could hear the screeching of the metal, and I'm assuming that that was taking the metal off the tops of the bins and the machine shed. Um, I could hear things scrunching for a long time, like like you were moving metal across the cement, and actually that did happen. Um, it, you'd hear a lot of screeching and then just bang on the ground. I'm, a, I'm guessing the house shook. I wasn't sure that the house was going to still be there when I came up out of the basement from all the sound. And it, it was a good 40 minutes. It was a good 40 minutes of not being able to to get in touch with someone. I mean, I, I, I called my son in Cedar Rapids. I said, head for the basement now. He hadn't heard anything, so he did. Now we are on Highway 30. Uh, we're near the Van Horn area. Uh, we are, all right, here's a strong wind. We are just in the core now. All right, Jason, if you want to pull over safely, you can do so. We are now in the core of really intense winds. We got a big burst right there. Uh, you can see we are going probably about 40 to 50 and you can see the wind is going faster than we are. The rain's going faster than we are. Intense wind with this storm right now. You can probably see leaves flying through the air. That's debris flying through the air as well. Uh, Jason, let me get you a good crossroad here as soon as I can. Um, we got a road coming up and again, you can see really intense wind happening with this storm. We got cars. This car is just in, in oncoming traffic. I don't know what this guy is doing. Wow, okay, because I don't know what that was, but that was big problems. We got debris flying up the road with us right now. You know, I've been storm chasing for more than a decade and I've seen so many extremes in weather, 
but this was the first time that I felt like I really lost control of the situation. There was nowhere that we could go to be safer. We tried to do everything that we could to be safe when we were out there. We kind of got on the downside of a hill, try to get some protection that way. We had a line of trees a bit off to our west that acted a bit like a windbreak. We didn't have any buildings like sheds that would come apart in destructive winds. We tried to do everything that we could to be as safe as we could out there. How fast the wind is going right now. A uh, really, really intense wind uh, with the storms that moves down Highway 30. Uh, right now we are right near Van Horn. This is coming right towards you in Cedar Rapids. Very intense wind is flying with the storm right now. So I checked the weather religiously, obviously uh, being index staining. And so I knew there was like a 60% chance of rain in the afternoon. So no big deal. We were working inside, so it's totally fine. But we saw really dark clouds coming in from the west. I had a friend from Des Moines check in saying there's a serious storm coming, but I thought like a little bit of thunderstorm, some lightning, nothing too crazy. Um, I just remember the skies being, you know, kind of this light gray as, you know, you can see maybe there might be rain coming. And I knew there was some storms coming, but nothing like we got. Headed down to Tama and driving along Highway 63 heading south, just seeing buildings blown across the road, uh, trailers flipped over in the Casey's parking lot, um, trees down, lines down, people trying to drive under power lines, around power lines, cars hung up in them. EMS couldn't get to the, to the north end of town, they couldn't get to the south end of town, we had lines down. So this was a large scope that we knew as Tama County we had to respond to on our own because mutual aid was not going to be a possibility because Marshall County got hit, Powashi County got hit, Benton County got hit. We didn't know what was going on up in Blackout County, so this was something we had to rely on our own. I've seen so many reports of these homes and built businesses and buildings being damaged and unfortunately, I mean, there, there's going to be so much loss on these crops too. So this is right along Highway 30. This is coming to the east incredibly quickly, and it is going to be an intense period of strong winds as it comes to the east here. So this is the situation. Very, very dangerous thunderstorm. If you do not have to be out, then please stay inside and you want to just be away from the windows is going to be the key thing here as we're dealing with these intense thunderstorms that are going to produce winds of 80, 90, maybe even higher uh, in terms of in terms of the wind speeds. I think it was still so hard to really comprehend what the storm was actually doing. It was still really difficult to wrap your head around it. I don't think any four years of school can set you up for what that storm was like. And so I think we all felt a little out of control not seeing how rapidly this storm intensified over just a couple of hours. Sirens are going off. sirens went off and they went off for a while and then stopped and I was like looking around going what's this for because because once again it's just just as my son said overcast gray sky I thought I don't see anything after it, all the sirens and what you know weather radio went off um, things calmed down so I come out to check on these guys I thought that the sirens were probably um, freaking them out. They they probably never heard anything like that before, so I, I would be if I was them, so I wanted to come check on them. We're hiking up, uh, you know, there's there's some gorgeous bluffs there along the Cedar River, um, you know, just walking along the trail and, and we got sort of to a certain point and, and started hearing uh, sirens in the distance. Um, and it was like, huh, that's, 
that's usually a good sign when you're when you're out at the at the state park to, to turn around and so we started hiking back uh, towards the car. This is insane. Well, that's. Um, I don't know if Nick can actually hear me. I, that was the, 90. The storms oh, are very, very. We lost the window. We lost the back window. Okay, so we're gonna. If you guys can take Nick's mic down, we're gonna we're gonna let them uh, make sure they get to somewhere safe. But in, an incredibly intense thunderstorm is coming through. If you know anyone who's on the roads right now and that can get off of the roads that are on anywhere from around I-380 south of what Waterloo to Cedar Rapids uh, on Highway 30, 151. measured a wind gust of just over 90 miles an hour and then the back right window in our vehicle blew out. So at that point, we're really trying to assess, well, what can we do in this situation? Okay, shoot. Yeah, we're good. We lost the window. But it, it looks like it's getting even worse out there. I mean, that is incredibly strong. He said 92 mile an hour winds uh, and possibly higher than that. It looks like that they were going up. The second window that was right behind my head blew out and it showered me with glass. It cut up my hand pretty good as well. The gust got stronger with time, and this wasn't five, 10 minutes. This went on for 30 to 45 minutes. We measured 99 before we had to shut everything down, and we by far saw stronger wind gust in the following 10, 15 minutes. Okay, I hear the last of the wheel and shutting down here. They they send off the uh, the activation tone like five times there. They usually do a three. This is an ugly storm that you saw coming in. This is the ugliest I've seen in a really really long time. More central Iowa after this storm passed through and it really hasn't weakened over the past couple minutes or really the hour at that and still getting tons of reports. We're seeing a lot of things on Twitter of power lines down. It is expected that lots of areas are going to lose power here shortly as the storm continues to progress over there. We're seeing lots of trees down. Um, really, these winds are hurricane force winds. I know Nick mentioned that before, but um, it seems like most reports are coming in 70 to 85 miles per hour, but we have had some gusts upwards of 100 miles per hour. So. Yeah, I mean, we've had, we've had multiple reports of these incredibly intense winds, and uh, we've seen people sending these photos of, I mean, here's uh, a business in Urbandale, so around the Des Moines area, several trees downed, and the roof off of the building there. So this is just going to continue to get worse. We still have, I mean, we, we can even still see some of the sun poking through probably in parts of Cedar Rapids, but there's clouds starting to move in now. We have the, um, we are going to start to see this get very intense in the Cedar Rapids area in the next, um, just matter of minutes, the next 10 to 15 minutes. If anyone does have a, um, any DOT cameras or anything like that, any of the cameras like that that we can see along this storm, then uh, we can also look at, at that situation and see how uh, things are going. Can we just take Nick's picture? We don't necessarily, oh, we don't have Nick's picture. So they had very, very intense winds going on there and they are going to uh, hopefully get out of the worst of that shortly here, but we have, these strong winds that have been in excess of 90 miles an hour moving into the Cedar Rapids area and going to come through Lynn County right now. So Nick is saying peak gust of 92 miles an hour uh, and we in the Van Horn area sustained at 70 miles an hour. Marengo at 60 mile an hour winds and that that's kind of on the southern side where it's a little bit weaker. So 
you know, around the Cedar Rapids, Williamsburg, Iowa City areas, that's really where I'm, I'm seeing the bigger concerns right now. Um, and even in some of these thunderstorms up to the north, 50, 60 mile an hour winds have been going on. So um, just an incredible amount of damage has been ongoing. Storm chasers in Marshall County, Marshalltown saying estimated winds of 90 to 100 miles an hour. And that is just upsetting after they have just coming weather. A uh, quick reminder of things before we get started here. We have multiple warnings in multiple areas. And warnings take precedence over other traffic in particular. We do not need any fair weather reports and we do not need any siren reports. We are aware that the sirens have gone off and we are not interested non-severe weather. We do have an incoming storm. It does seem to be a whopper. This morning was raised two counties away because it was that strong. We are looking at radar indicated. Uh, storm is here. Uh, with very, very strong wind. Um, if we can take the sky cam in Coralville right now, you can see uh, the thunderstorm starting to approach. The skies are getting dark. The emergency managers may be putting the sirens out a couple of times. This is for these thunderstorms producing winds of 70 miles an hour or greater. This will do more widespread damage than what we will get with a with just a tornado, unfortunately, because we're not talking about just one singular thing. We're talking about a big swath, big area. So I'm gonna try and pull up some um, DOT cameras too and try and see if we can get some other views of what's happening in the area because this is not here. But we do have some very intense winds going on. Okay, so if you guys can take my weather scan do, this is, you can see people are stopped um, in, the area highway 30 county home road v66 this is in benton county the camera is rocking they're just cars totally stopped visibility is down this is the intensity that is coming to cedar rapids and iowa city this is an incredibly dangerous thunderstorm lightning is ongoing there are likely going to be power poles that come down and trees that come down if you have to head out the door right now try to wait this is not something that you want to be driving out in. Incredibly low visibility. There's going to be debris flying in the roadway. Nick Stewart is a very experienced storm chaser who uh, that storm caught up. It is moving incredibly fast. And they went through that and had debris flying toward the car. The car is getting pushed off the road. There are semis and trucks stopped here. We've already seen trucks stopped in the area. In, and trucks that have been flipped over in the in the area from this thunderstorm. I mean, this like this is just incredible. This is this is an insane, insanely strong winds right now. Sarah, are you seeing anything from the Weather Service? Any more reports? Yeah, I mean, mainly the threat with this storm is the winds. Obviously, we've been talking about that. There is reports of small hail along with it, but again, really, we're just focusing on that winds. That's what's causing the damage. That's what's taking down the trees. You can see on this right here or on the camera that she just showed you at US 30 trucks are being blown off the road. That's how intense these winds are and that's really going to be the story for the next couple of minutes. And I know Rebecca said these storms are moving quickly across the area. They continue to push east, but for the most part, for the time being, as they head into Cedar Rapids and Iowa City here shortly, it's going to be very intense for the next several minutes. Expect these winds and expect lots of power to go out because we're already, I'm sure, starting to see that already as these storms push across. So, um, yeah, I mean, we, I'm, I'm sure if we, I mean, you can look yeah, on probably like mid American and stuff like that and, uh, and a lion and see, mm -hmm. I'm going to try and see if I can find some other, other cameras out ahead of this, but I mean, we're going to see this come into the Cedar Rapids area and especially the South side of town. That's where I have my greatest concern on this Northern side. Um, you're, you're probably not going to get into as intense of the, of the winds, but Shellsburg, you could be still experiencing 60 mile an hour winds. We're still in a warning for 90 mile an hour winds here. And we're likely going to see possibly another warning get issued as uh, this thunderstorm continues to trek to the east. So 
This is coming closer to Cedar Rapids along Highway 30, especially toward the Eastern Iowa Airport in Walford. I'm sure that the winds aren't getting incredibly intense in that area right now. I'm going to see um, if um, I'm going to see if I can find some more live video of what's going on, but we do have, we do have video from out in Tama. So this is a uh, roof torn off of a building there. Yeah. And bricks, it looks like bricks are down in the street. So this is in Tama. This just went through Tama and it's heading toward the Cedar Rapids area along highway 30. And what you just saw Nick go through in new hall, Norway toward Eastern Iowa airport on highway 151 and and uh, Highway 30 there, where that cross section is, you're, it's about to get very intense and it is going to continue to go along I-380. If you know someone who is possibly commuting along I-380 right now, you need to let them know that this is a very dangerous thunderstorm. Visibility is going to drop if they can get off of the road. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of people that are going to stop and pull over and there's going to be a lot of issues there. So here, yeah, high, Highway 30 and 16th Avenue Southwest, Southwest side of Cedar Rapids. Here it goes. It's starting now. The wind is going to make this incredibly difficult to travel in because there's intense rain. There's going to be debris. We have seen this happen. Okay, wind is starting to pick up now. That is really, really dark out. I'm looking over my neighbor's house. It is black out. It is black, black. Okay, yeah, there's the... Uh, there's the shelf. That's the leaning edge of the shelf right there. You can hear the roar, holy crap. You can hear the roar as it comes in, oh my god. There it is. You can hear it roaring off to the west. There are a lot of people on the highway. I'm just clicking around on our DOT cameras. Uh, and there are some people around the metro area, but the skies are going to get dark. Sarah, can you get, um, yeah, we can, we can go to the Coralville camera too. There's, yeah, there's Highway 30 and Williams Boulevard. You can't even see, I can see some lights flashing, um, but you can, you can hardly see what's going on here. And this is coming into Cedar Rapids now. Oh my goodness. The roar. You can hear the roar. Oh my God, trees are going down over there. There's the shelf cloud starting to come in and we are going to be experiencing very low visibility, very strong winds here very shortly. And we are going to um, just watch this come to the east here. Irony is sometimes when the damage is so bad, like happened in Cedar Rapids, it knocks your communications out. So you're not hearing something. And that's one of those red flags is when you know something bad is going on, but you're not hearing much about it then you know you're in, in a real serious situation. Okay, the power, the power is off. I lost power. So then I got a tech text from one of my friends from Stony Point who showed me this black sky. And then my son-in-law, who is also a spotter, was working, he works on the west side. He also texted me a picture of black sky. So I was like, what is this? So I looked down when study, was studying the radar, maybe 30 seconds. 
looked up and the sky was a whole lot different. I mean, then it was showing the classic shelf cloud, gust front shelf cloud across the whole west sky. And, I, and then that's like, oh boy, here we go. This is, this is it. Echo Zero Sierra, Sierra Mike, uh, large, trees, large mature trees coming down, Edgewood, and Highway 100. Echo Zero from UUS. We lost power at our house. Scott might have lost it too. Might be why he's not responding. And through you. We're in excess of 60 mile an hour winds. blown. Stay up, tree. Stay up. Oh my god, this is 70. Oh my god. Holy cow. I got hit in the house. We just had a gust of over 80 at my house. And you could just see the front coming, coming through, and I um <clears throat> stopped to take some photos of uh, it it was uh, it was impressive and and you could sort of hear the wind uh, there were some other folks out there along the cedar river just looking at it and uh so i started taking i took some pictures and, and it was moving pretty fast and and you could start to feel feel the wind pick up a little bit and you could hear the rain uh so hightailed it back to the to the to our our car which is parked not far away and started trying to like okay it's time to, it's time to go visually it wasn't any different really than, you know, classic shelf cloud events in the summertime. But the fact that I was monitoring ham radio, because I'm also a ham radio uh, operator, there was all sorts of traffic. Winds here are 60 miles per hour. I'm, I'm, the trees are bent halfway down. And so, since, since I was monitoring that, that got the adrenaline. That, that, that made me realize that this was uh, no ordinary storm. Oh my. There you go. It's just picking up now. Yeah, the tree across the way is blown down. In storms before, I've been in position where we block a down tree or down power lines. It's not an everyday thing, but it's also not too uncommon during a storm. I came across a tree that was down and a power line in the 1600 block of 2nd Avenue, and it was definitely picking up at that time. The storm was getting noticeably bad, and a lot of officers were calling in that they were blocking roads with down trees and down power lines. Um, and as I sat there, I was in Wellington Heights and a lot of old trees in that area, a lot of big old trees, I, I realized that there's probably going to be more trees coming down. I don't want to be sitting in this block. And so that's when I headed out of there. I don't want to be here. You should be in the base. It should be in the base, but not tornado straight line winds. There's all sorts of reports of, of mature trees coming down. So, the, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just getting where I'm at right now. So. All right. Love you. Bye. I mean, oh my! The the doors just blew open in the studio. The, wow. The doors just got blown open. Wow. You can just hear you can the intensity. <laughs> yeah. There it is. It's 12:30, but it feels like. <laughs>
very <laughs> nighttime out there. Yeah. The first time when I realized that we may be in danger is when those doors flew open in the back and I realized how powerful those winds and I got a glimpse of what was going on outside. And then shortly afterwards, the lights started shaking and swinging. The lights start shaking. Sarah and I kind of grab each other and we're like, we probably need to leave. And they were probably listening to me in the newsroom. Oh, uh, he's losing his roof. He lost part of his roof. My neighbor lost part of his roof. You can see the shingles blowing off. Oh, he's losing his roof. Yeah. We didn't see it coming yeah, until it was it, almost on us. We got out, tried to get a few people that were close by in to our service area here for some protection, but we couldn't even get out into the park because trees were just falling uh, right and left over the road. Now my wife uh, is, is, is the, uh, wondered if it, we were really making the right decision to try to drive through, <laughs> drive through that, that, that rain, that storm. So we pulled over, and there was, I mean, just a lot of, a lot of rain, a lot of wind. Park ranger <laughs> came over and was like, hey, you, would you get, would your folks like to come down uh, into my basement? And usually when a park ranger asks you if, if you want to take shelter in their basement, that seems like a, a good time to say yes. I, but, um, I hope it's still attached. I hope we can show you. Wow, at some the point, winds but... are the winds are very strong. It, it is very eerie. The building, it, oh my gosh, the building is shaking. The bu it sounds like something fell on the building. I think we need to. Um, we're gonna just assess how things are here, but mm -hmm. the but, lights um, are shaking. Yep, things Please are stay rattling. inside of your home. <laughs> Please, if you're driving, pull over. Lots of cars have pulled over. Take shelter. Get inside a store. It's this is again tornado force, hurricane force winds. Our building is shaking. Yeah, we have in very intense winds going on. We're gonna go into the into our uh, master control to take shelter. We advise you to do the same. Very intense winds are going on. I'm gonna hope that you can still hear me while I do this. There goes another good gust. Okay, that was probably, that was 80 there too. This is, this is a dare ratio. Holy cow. I pulled up here during our lunch hour. The crew went to go get food and I came back to get some frog tape for an accent wall. And I pulled the truck up horizontally here because it was already starting to pour pretty hard. I just ran from the door to the front door, which was here, and got drenched because it was already raining pretty hard. But I go back to our shelves, which were over in that corner of the shop. And then I come back here to the front door and then that's when I saw the street signs bent over, trees were bending. so. I decided I was safer to stay here than try to drive back to the uh, job site just in case it's picked up any further. And then this is what we have. Help! Stuff flying everywhere. Sign bent over. Ugh. Help! I don't really ever think, where can I get away from trees? So I head up uh, First Avenue, and that's when it like it was obvious that this was really bad. When I saw where the tree was, or where the car was in the roadway, I could tell that that that's not a parked car. That one was in the lane of traffic, so most likely someone was stopped at light. And 
tree had fallen on and no, it was obvious I, need, I just need to go out there and I need to check on them, make sure they're good, see if I can do anything to help them. Uh, so I just, I peeked in the window, I could see her in there and I was able to talk to her through the uh, rear driver's side window, it was cracked a couple inches. I couldn't see through those windows because their airbags, side airbags had deployed. So I talked to her through there, I made sure she was okay, she, she said she was, she said she was the only person in the car. So I asked her if she could get out on the passenger side and moved over there and we couldn't get the door open very far because a branch was blocking it, but we got it open just enough that she could slide out. I gotta call my sister back. I was just on the phone with her. Um, I'm out with the female. Make sure you must down with the car. I'm gonna get her some more safe. She's fine. First, we kind of drove away hard. She was looking at it. This has been going on now for 20 minutes. Almost 20 minutes now. This event was ongoing and I knew after about 20 minutes that this was not going to be good because trees were breaking. I could see in the, back, in the distance trees were breaking and so I, I, I and I've never seen this much this just kind of destruction in my entire life. It had been going on for a while and going on and going on and going on and I was actually getting cold because I think I had cowboy boots, some shorts <laughs> and a tank top on and all the water coming in here is very cold water too and very cold winds that came with it. I was concerned for them to come out here because they were new um, and so I was really worried and I, I grabbed them underneath my arms and they were just shaking and they were cold too but um, I just felt I had to protect them. So we're gonna take a deep breath. <laughs> we all are. This is not over. This is going to continue to go through Eastern Iowa. And we are going to continue to see these incredibly strong winds. Holy sh Holy Holy It can't update, I don't have data. I don't have power either, so I don't have Wi-Fi. It's not common if you have somebody with a disabled vehicle up on a highway. I, I try to get to them a some sort of populated place, a business. So usually a gas station or grocery store, then they can call for somebody that can come get them and get them the rest of the way home. So that was that was my first thought, a gas station or grocery store, and I knew Ivy was just a few blocks away. Can you hear me? Power's out here. I'm not gonna be able to get in that door and get the power out. Okay. Once I found that first car at the tree on it, I felt like there should be more of this. I need to get out there and find these people because they're not gonna be able to call for help. I'm not gonna be able to get communications that these are the people that need help, and that's why I think after I got her in the high V, I was gonna head back out, and I, I kind of realized, like, I'm not gonna do anyone any good. I can't even see across the street from this point. I'm not gonna find anyone like this. I'm just gonna end up with a tree on my car. This is absolutely wild. At least those lights are somehow still on. I'm gonna take a peek outside. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there's a little bit of light. Okay. All right. I guess I'm closing the door now. I'm not even, like, pushing it that hard. It's just getting sucked close. We presume there were other hikers out there because we just didn't have time to go clear the entire park before the storm hit. At the time, it didn't strike me as, as something particularly out of the ordinary, right? It, it didn't strike me as, as this inland hurricane. At the time, honestly, what, what really was uh, part of the calculation was, was, was the pandemic. Here we were hanging out in a, a basement uh, with a bunch of strangers, it, I mean, right? Like it hit all the it was confined space, not great ventilation, bunch of people we don't know, not everybody was wearing masks. So that was, so there was certainly a little bit of like, 
Ooh, that's not good. Okay, it's, it's picking up. Wow. Look at that, there goes another branch off that tree. Collins Road. Intense winds going on northeast side of town, but you can just hear noises, things are hitting the roof. I start seeing debris and stuff like that floating around. I saw somebody's round, plastic, large swimming pool just rolling along the field. But then it got to the point where debris started hitting my car. When it first when it first started, the winds were out of the west. And then as it started to pick up, it started to change to the northwest. I saw I I I moved my car directly into the, the wind at the northwest. But um, it was when the winds probably got to 100 miles per hour, it felt like being in an automated car wash. Your car was shaking, water and suds were, were hitting the window, blasting the window that some, at times you couldn't see out the, out the car. It definitely lasted a long time. It was surprising how long it lasted. I was basically waiting inside the high V until I could see across the street again. I figured then it would be time to go back out. And I was concerned that I would find more situations like this, and that's why I wanted to get back out in the street. And with the radios not working, and I knew dispatch was being overwhelmed with calls because everyone has this happening. They have no idea that this is the entire city, the entire county, that you know, this whole area of Iowa is being hit like this. The rain is dying down. This is the rear inflow check that's coming through. I got damage. Just listen to the sounds that's going on right now. Okay, all right. I guess I'm closing the door now. I didn't want to be filming at this window because of the uh, fact that anything coming in here is going to come right into the window. inflow jet that's punching down to the surface. Here, here's a live look inside of our <laughs> studio. The studio why, why we're not that's in there right now. <laughs> but um, the, the lights, the ceiling is shaking. We could hear everything shaking in there. So this is why it's so important for you to be in that lowest level mm -hmm. of your home. The doors are opening and there are people rushing in to close the doors and we're still trying to tell people what's happening because at that point I'm just kind of narrating <laughs> because I'm like, well, this is what's going to be coming you know, to the east too and what's happening in Cedar Rapids. But not something I ever expected would happen. I thought really the only chance that I would ever have to leave the studio if we were on the path of a tornado. You don't think about that happening just with a severe thunderstorm. I don't know what we thought was going to happen, but I mean, very realistically, the lights above us in the studio could have come down on our heads. This is bad. That's got 
got to be a tornado. That was probably 70 there. I have half an hour recording capability on my camera. I'm at almost 27 minutes right now. That's how long this has been going. So there were some loud crashes outside. I'm pretty sure either trees fell or roofs are getting torn off. I'm like cowering in the bathroom now because there's at least another layer above me. But I don't know. It takes a lot to scare me, but I'm a little, I'm a little spooked. Hoping this all <laughs> holds up here. I'm just gonna. I'll be here. It was obvious that this was really bad. A lot of officers have been calling on the radios and our radios started getting on the fritz and we actually like lost radios for a while. You couldn't hear everything that was being transmitted, everything that was being transmitted uh, wasn't coming through. They had us change channels. We have emergency backup channels that are lesser quality, but they can transmit farther. Oh my God. Something really big definitely just fell or got torn off. I'm gonna keep this rolling. Just when you think it's starting to die down, it picks back up again. I think we're probably gusting to like 70 here. Jeez! What is going on? For now? You good? Okay. Check. Jeez Louise, this isn't gonna oh, end. These are all particles from the. I've scene. got 45 seconds left on this clip. Everything's pretty much down. Up there. And there are not many trees standing out there. No. Um, and and things so are things are coming down. There's just out here. like leaves splattered. It's likely going to look like a bit of a. I mean, like it reminds me like after hurricane, you step outside and you're dealing with this very widespread damage. Oh my god. Look at this! The roof is shaking real hard. Oh no.
and yeah, I mean, we, we have a big tower that sits above our, our studio and mm -hmm. we have the ceilings shaking in there. Luckily in the hallway that we are, where we are, um, that it is, um, that it is, it's shaking in that studio. I'm very curious what it's like outside right now, but I'm not gonna go take a look. We are staying right here. It was so loud because of all the destruction and damage and things that were flying and hitting things. It was nothing like I've seen or heard before. It's power lines, and if it's not doing that, it's going to blow over all the trees. Again, not very many standing here in Broadcast Park taking out the power lines. We do have, it looks like, about for Western Lynn County, 15 more minutes in this warning. Hopefully by then we're just getting some widespread rain and thunderstorms, not nearly as intense but far eastern Lynn County and far off towards the Mississippi, that one goes till 1.30. So we do still have a good amount of time that we're gonna be seeing these damaging thunderstorms and winds and still here, it doesn't look like it's died down much. Oh man, oh man, oh no, oh no. All right, okay, all right. Well, oh man. Please hold. No, 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 no. 